Father, this morning, it is an exciting time to be alive, to know that you're on the throne and that you rule the whole universe and that you have everything under control, even though at some times it doesn't seem like it. Today, we just want to praise you for your goodness and your mercy to us, for your loving kindness, and for the many evidences we have that you care for us. We want to ask, Lord, that you will bless as um, we look today at ways that we can help to care for others and that it will further our understanding, Lord, of how you have put into natural means uh, the power, your power, to help to heal. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We have two videos. The first one's very short, just reinforcing what we have been talking about, maybe answering some other questions. The second one is going to be um, dealing with hydrotherapy. Hello, I'm Valerie Schreiber from Uchi Pines Institute in Alabama, where Dr. Agatha Thrash is our head medical uh, director. And today we're going to talk about hydrotherapy. Now that sounds like a really big word, but hydro simply means water. And it's going to be us showing you how to do incredible water treatments that get incredible results. And the beauty about this treatment is it doesn't really cost anything unless you have city water bills to pay. But really, it is, a, it is the most classic treatment we we're going to show you uh, that does various things, but especially was used during the 1918 Spanish flu. It was used in a special town, and they did a doctor did this and a nurse did these treatments on people that came down with the flu and nobody died. Now that's fabulous results. And so as we start showing you about this and telling you a little bit more, you'll see why it worked. Um, it's, it's the most non-toxic way of treating a person, moving blood from one area to another area, bringing nourishment into the affected area, and it'll heal. So now I wanna just kinda tell you how it works and I tell this to my patients when I'm giving them the treatment because if your mind can connect in and you can see how this is working in the body, then you will believe in it. You will have faith in, its, in the way that it will work and bring healing to you. And when you really connect with it and you believe that, then your healing will be even much more quicker and much more tremendous. I don't want you to have a doubt in your mind when we finish this treatment. Is water, will that really work? You know, I don't want you to have that. I want you to be absolutely clear that this is going to work and you're going to be healed if you use this treatment. Now, what it does is we're going to apply heat to the body. And I'll go over this again as we're working on a patient. We apply heat to the body. Now what heat does when we apply it to the body, it dilates the blood vessels. Now, you know, they're not this big, but just to give you an example, about 40%. And what happens then, it starts to pull inner congestion to the surface. 
And it also, at the same time, is bringing good blood supply to the affected diseased area. And then what we do is we apply, we do that for three minutes, and then we apply cold. And what cold does is it constricts the blood vessels. And so now all these impurities that have been pulled to the surface are going to now circulate back through the body, through the cleansing organs, which are your, your kidneys, your liver and your lungs. And even though we're working on lungs that have been infected with a flu virus or pneumonia or bronchitis or various different types of lung conditions, it now allows the lungs itself to clean out what's going on in there. So it's a wonderful thing. And so it's a pumping action. It's, we're just circulating blood, bringing in good, healthy nutrients, bringing in a lot of the white blood cells, which we know fight disease and it elevates the immune system, and you can't help but get well. That's the beauty about it. You can't help but get well. Now, if you can see it, remember, we dilate the blood vessels, and it's going to pull what? Congestion that are in the lungs to the surface, at the same time bringing in good, healthy blood with nutrients in it, the white blood cells in it, and now we're going to constrict it, and now it's going to take that old congested blood, carry it back through all the cleansing organs of the body, then we're going to apply another heat, and now it's going to pull good, healthy blood, oxygenated blood as well, which let me just stop right here. When you have pain in any part of your body, that is a first sign that you've got low oxygen, so you, and you've got congested. You know when you're, you swell up, you have a lot of lymph fluid, that's congestion going on. Well, blood can get congested and stagnant in an area where there's disease happening. What we want to do is move it out, not let it just stay there, because then you get sicker for a longer period of time. But as soon as we can move this diseased blood out of the area and bring in, what did I just say? Good oxygenated blood with lots of nutrition, lots of white blood cells, it can't help but heal. And I know you can see that right now, just what I'm saying. So now we're going to go on to show you how to set this up. If you were in your home, or you were somewhere and someone got sick and you wanted to help them, I'm going to show you how you would make it. You would do this, obviously, in a bed. However, you can do it on the dining room table if you'd like. You can do it on the floor. Wherever it's convenient for you to work, this is the way to do it. Now, if you do it in the bed, one thing that you want to do is you want to put a piece of plastic. Now, this is a shower curtain that I got at the dollar store for just a dollar. And or you can get a, a garbage bag and you can cut a garbage bag and put a garbage bag underneath the sheet in the bed. And this protects your bed from getting soaking wet because we're going to be using water here and it would go through to your mattress. So you want to very first is protect your sheet. So you can get a shower curtain liner is what I use or you can use a garbage bag. Then we're going to um, put the sheet on. Put the pillow on. Let me just lay this right here. Put that there. And we're going to have a bucket full of water for her feet to go in. We're going to have extra hot water in a container that we will use to pour in beside her feet as it is required because we want to keep her feet nice and warm throughout this treatment. Now, I've been heating up the fomentation pads in the microwave and now I'm going to get one of them here take it out of the plastic bag and here is the blanket that we're going to use to wrap this hot fomentation in wrap it over this way and now we're going to put this down her spine, and it'll be all ready for her when she gets on this bed. Now, this is a real important part of the treatment in terms of you want to be very careful because when the body lays against this and is trapped by the bed, it has a tendency to get hotter much faster, and it can burn a little bit. So we want to be sure that we have enough blankets. I usually triple the towel up here so that it's, and then I take another towel. I'm, I'm real cautious with this, but I'll show you how we treat it if it does burn a little bit. 
we, or start to burn. We don't want to burn. We want to, if it starts to burn. So then we make sure it's covered real good and has enough thickness for her. Now I'm going to ask Helena, who's been my colleague here at Uchi Pines for many years. We've traveled together to Romania. She's a jack of all trades, but she happens to be a teacher uh, at here and plus works in her office. So she's going to be my patient today. And now, as you see, we have the pillow to go under her knees because we want to take the strain off her back. And we're going to take her feet and we're going to put them in the hot water. Now, the hot water, when we start to put her feet down in the hot water, we want to not just drop her feet in the hot water. We want to make sure that she can tolerate the heat that we have. So I just start to put her feet down in and I put some of the hot water over top of the feet to be sure. Now, is that good, Helena? That feels comfortable? Okay. So now we go ahead and drop them on down in. Um, here is a little uh, wood. I don't know what you call it. It's a piece of wood. I don't know exactly what to call this. But anyway, this covers over the bucket. This is made out of just a thin piece of plywood. This right here is an insulation that you can go to, to Lowe's and buy. It has a split already in it that you put over pipes. And so I put it here just in case she were to move her legs or whatever and she were to hit this. And so you can see now when I cover her up, cover this up, it's over there and it's laying there and it won't drop in. So you can make these things up yourself, especially if you want to have a nice kit prepared so that you can help people at any time, any place. These are some of the things that you'll want to do. We have here some fomentation pads. Now let me just tell you about this. It uh, has many layers in it. We have a friend of mine Donna makes these, and they're the best I've seen. In fact, you, we will have at the end of this filming where you can buy these uh, fomentation pads. And I encourage you to do it if you can afford to. They're not that expensive. And one, it's a one-time buy. It'll last you the rest of your life, and more than likely you can leave it to your children and grandchildren, and it'll still last. They last that long. They're wonderful. But let's say you did not have a, a fomentation uh, pad. You, you can use towels. You can have a towel just like this. If you had to, you can go ahead and sew a big X through this towel and hold it together and make it. Now, it will not hold the heat as good as having one of these, but it will work to some degree. I mean, you can get results. If you were in the jungle, you can go ahead and use a banana leaf and get it heated up and you can do the very same thing. You can use newspaper if you got into a pinch and there wasn't anything else to do. You can use rags and, and, and you will get results because it's the heat, the water heated up, and it's the cold uh, that causes constriction that causes the healing in this treatment. So whatever modality that works, use it. If you ended up somewhere and only had a piece of sponge, you can go ahead and soak that and use the very same thing. It'll work one way or the other because of the fact you're using water and you're using heat and you're using cold. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how we heat these up. Now there's various ways you can heat this up. You can you can wet, you wet these down real good so they're nice and soaked and then you wring them out so that they're not real dripping. And if you had to, you can wrap them in tin foil and stick them in an oven and heat them up. You can put them in a boiling pan of water and get them good and hot. Or almost every home everywhere has a microwave and that's what I'm going to show you how we do it in a microwave. I wet this down real good, fold it over, and then I have just a regular grocery bag just like this, but you can have any plastic, doesn't matter what, just some kind of plastic bag. You put the foamy inside this plastic bag like this, and then you go over here to the microwave, and you put it in the microwave and turn the microwave on. Now what I do is I heat two of them at a time, and I uh, uh, fold another one up, put it in there, and I stick it on for about 10 minutes to get it really hot. At about five minutes, I go in there and turn them over so that they're real nice and hot. Sometimes you can get two exchanges out of one of them. They're so nice and hot. 
Now you'll want to have a basin of cold water here so that when we do the cold mitten friction, we have it. You're going to want to have a, a glass of water for your uh, patient to take. And you're doing, I'm showing you all this now why this is supposed to be heating up. You're going to want to have extra washcloths like this and a couple of hand towels. And obviously, you're going to have about four to five regular towels that you're going to need. You've got to have a lot of towels so that you can make sure that her body does not burn in any way because it could burn if you didn't cover her and protect her right. And we're ready to do our treatment. We're going to take another towel, cover her up, unbutton her pajamas, and you know, it is important to keep your patient modest. So we just take uh, her pajama top off because we want skin. We want it to be directly on the skin. Um, you want to be real careful also if you're working with elderly people. They have a tendency to have thinner skin. So it's more cautious when you're working with them that you make sure they don't burn in any way. So now we have this towel over her. And then we're going to put another towel. And we're going to go ahead now and get one of our fomentations that we've put into the microwave. And I'm going to use this right here as my table, but you can use it any table at home. Here is another. Uh, uh, wool blanket or flannel and you know if you if you um, you can just cut up some of your old blankets you can go to an army navy store you can get blankets there and all you do is cut it down the middle and then cut it across and you'll have four exactly four the right size you need for a fomentation you can also go to used stores and find good wool blankets many times. I know I was able to do that myself. So here's another hot one. You got to be kind of careful when they're really hot. They'll burn you too. Cover this up like this. And now we're going to lay it over her chest. When we do that, guess what? We put another towel on. <laughs> so as you can see, we have lots of towels because now we want to hold the warmth in there. And we're going to pull the blanket up. And let's say Helena, for some reason, has a, a, a sinus infection. Well, Donna makes wonderful uh, sinus packs. And so we can put this down in hot water, heat it up, wrap it in a hand towel like this. And then we can put this on Helena's face. And it'll cover her sinuses quite well while this treatment is going on. We want to be sure that we have water available for her because we want to keep her hydrated because she will be perspiring quite a bit, losing fluid. So it's very important to make sure that they're getting plenty of flu fluids in any kind of hydrotherapy water treatment that you give. They must have an adequate amount of water because of the fact that they're Dehyd or they're um, perspiring so much. So now we'd have a timer. We'd turn the timer on for three to five minutes. <clears throat> and we're going to pretend that she's already gone her full course. Now, what we do here, here we have ice water. <clears throat> and Donna has made, again, wonderful little mittens, but you can take a regular washcloth and sew it down one side and across the bottom, and you can stick your hand in and make your own little mitten. Um, and they're easier when you actually have a mitten. You can hang on to it a whole lot better. So what I'm going to do is get ready for this, because here's the ice. And I'm going to pull this back all at once and have my hands ready in this water. Wring it out a little bit, and I kind of just wring it like this, and now I'm going to put my hands on her chest, and I'm going to just rub her real briskly. And then I flip these over a little bit and just rub a little bit more. Now, if that doesn't go well with them, and especially an older person, you want to be careful because their skin is thin, then you would 
have a hand towel like this in the cold water, ready to go. Pick it up, squeeze it out like this, and this is what we do. <laughs> if this was on her, we say to them always, the cold is coming, and then we just do this. <laughs> and you know, the first, the first treatment when the cold hits, it's sort of like, Ugh! you know, but after that it feels absolutely wonderful when the next time comes because now you're starting to warm up. And then you can just take this towel like this and you can do a little bit like this. So you can do it either way. You know, it works. The most important thing is what I said earlier, is now we've done what? We've constricted the blood vessels. Remember what it's doing now, Helena. It's going through your body. It's taken all the impurities that were just pulled out, going through the cleansing organs. And now we're going to bring another fomentation. We're going to cover her back up quickly, bring another fomentation. We're going to lay it on her chest. Cover her up like this. Give her a drink of water. Make sure she's really drinking well. Now, I'm gonna go down here and check her feet. Now, I'm gonna go down here and check her feet. I wanna be certain that this water is staying warm. Now, why do I have her feet in warm water? Well, it helps to warm the body, but one of the other major things that it does is the feet are a reflex point for your abdominal area, your chest, and your head. So this, because she's got an uh, infection going on here in her head, her, her sinus areas, I wanna be able, and she's got a headache, I wanna be able to draw this blood away from the brain and the feet are the reflex, which I can just throw a real quick one in here. You can always, if you have a bad headache, you can just get a, a bucket of water, sit in the bathtub on a chair, put, put it underneath the faucet and allow hot water to go in and you can sit there for 15 or 20 minutes and nine times out of 10 the headache goes. Why? Because it has dilated the blood vessels in the feet and you put ice to the head and what does it do? It constricts. So it's doing what? Pulling the congested blood from the head to the feet. Isn't that great? <laughs> I just think it's so wonderful. So now I, I've tested and it's cooling down a little bit. So now I'm gonna take this hot water that I have ready for her and you're gonna take your hand and you're gonna move her feet to the side. And then I'm gonna start pouring on the edge. But as I start pouring, I agitate the water with my hand like this. Because you don't wanna scald your patient. You wanna be sure that this water is going in very nicely and it's warming up and not hurting her at all. And so when I get that done, I just move it around. I just move her feet back over. Put the top on, cover her back up. About that time, the bell's rung, and I can go ahead, and we can go ahead and use the cloth, wring it out real good, put it in my hand this way, and tell her the cold is coming. <laughs> and here it comes. Now, I might want to check at this point, this heat has been on her face, and, it's, and, and the water is drawing the infection away. Sometimes, there we go, put it on that. Figure out how it will hold on your patient's head <laughs> like that. That'll work good. So now it's on there for just about 30 seconds. You know, if it runs a, a few seconds here or there, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to just grab this and just do a little bit more friction over there. Till it's, and it feels good by now, doesn't it, Helena? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> feels really great. So now I'm just going to tell her the heat's coming. Now, the other big thing to do is you can get a dry washcloth, and when you take this wet uh, towel off of her body, you want to just dry. You want to make sure there are no droplets of water left on her because when the heat gets put back on her body, the little bit of droplets of water that could be there that are cold can cause a burn. It'll make a steam and cause a burn. So you always want to dry this part of her body off and then bring back down the towels, cover her up good. And now we'll, we'll just have another fomentation. We're going to put it back on. Now, mind you, we're going over here to the microwave. Whoops taking out another fomentation. 
I guess I've used most of mine, in a plastic bag that you've heated up. And, and depending how big your microwave is, you can put three in at, at a time. And what I do at home is I put the microwave after I've taken out one fomentation to put on, I put the microwave on the three minutes, and so or four minutes, I actually do it four, so that by the time I run back in and put it on the person, almost it's down to three minutes. And so the three minutes are on, when I hear the microwave ding, I know it's time to go get the next one. So there's all kinds of simple little things you can learn to do to make it easier and more efficient for you to do. But if not, you just carry a timer, and you'll see on one of the other DVDs. There's a kit to show you how to pack your whole kit, have it all ready, stuck in a closet somewhere. Someone gets sick, you don't have to run around the house to figure out where things are. You can just pull your kit out, have all your fomentations in there, everything that you need, and you can give whoever is, a, is, is sick in your home or someone calls you. You can just put it in the car and take off, and then you have everything there, and that makes it really convenient. So now we've taken out another fomentation. It's wrapped in, the, in this blanket put it on her. Now, the next thing I want to show you, she could be saying to me, oh, Valerie, my, my hip's burning a little bit. So I'll say, okay, Helena, let me get over here a minute. And I turn her over. <clears throat> and what you do is you have extra washcloths and you put one right where it's burning. Lay her back down because that will happen most of the time because of the fact it's trapped between her and the bed. And then she might say, well, you know, now I feel it on my shoulder. So then I just pull her back up. And I put another little, little washcloth right there. And then she may say, oh, it's getting really hot here. So you take your hands like this. I'm going to go underneath this fomentation on her skin. And I'm going to go like this. And just smooth across her skin. Lift it up for just a second. And then when you put it back down, most of the time, it's very comfortable. So it would be just like this. I'm putting under her, and I'm lifting it up, and then I'm going across her skin just like this. So remember, it's lifted up for a second and then smooth her skin. Usually that does the trick, and it stops any kind of heat or burning. So those are ways. So for you to be able to handle any little thing that goes on. And even, even if she says, well, it's, getting, it's, it's burning me right here, Valerie. So then I may take my hand and just do a little bit of this. But if not, I'll just do this. Because where the bony areas are is where your thinner your skin is, and that's the place that is more apt to feel the burning. And so that you just keep patting all the little pads. You don't have to stop the treatment. You just put your little pads wherever it needs to be. So is my patient nice and comfortable? Very comfortable. Now remember, once again, I just want to reiterate this. The heat's on. Now what's it doing? Dilating the blood vessels, pulling the inner congestion in her lungs. She's got a very serious case of flu. It's affected her bronchial tubes. So now we're pulling the congestion in that area, the diseased blood, we're pulling it to the surface. At the same time, it's pulling in good, healthy blood that's full of white blood cells, lots of oxygen, lots of nutrition in this fresh blood that's coming in. And now we're going to take, again, the cold is coming, Helena, and we're going to cover her up like this. Now, what did it just do? It constricted the blood vessels. And what's it doing when it constricts? It's carrying all that waste matter, Helena, that I just, we just pulled up, and it's carrying it back through all the cleansing organs, which are your liver, your kidneys, and your lungs. Now, I know you're saying, well, her lungs are sick, but that's what it's doing. Her lungs are supposed to be cleansing, but they're sick right now. They have disease in them. But because we have done this treatment, it starts to open up her lungs and her lungs are able to start doing some cleansing and kick out whatever's, whatever problem or disease that she has that's going on in there. So you can just see how this is going to work. We're pumping the blood up and we're taking it back through the eliminating organs. How could you not be healthy? I mean, it's going to get you well in a relatively short time. So now we're going to finish the treatment. Um, I'm going to take a cold mitten here, um, squeeze this here, and I'm just going to rub it across her face real good. Take the uh, sinus pack off.
Still want to keep her warm. The, the big thing that you try to do is don't allow her to get chilled. So if you're in a room, shut all the doors. Try to keep it nice and warm because you don't want her to get chilled at all. So now we're going to finish down here. And what we're going to do is take this off. I'm going to dry it off just a little bit. Cover her up good. And now we're going to do, let me see, what we call cold mitten friction. To finish off this treatment, <clears throat> we want to use cold all over her body. And again, it will feel good to her because by now she's sweating really good and she's really hot. So I'm going to take these mittens, put it in this ice water that I have over here. I'm going to pull her arm out, hold it up like this, and I'm going to just give her a real good rub, you know, all over. And as soon as I get that done, I'm going to just put her right back under the blanket. I'm going to do the same thing for her legs. I'm going to uncover one leg at a time, and I'm just going to do her lower leg, and I'm just going to do this. Rub it real good, and it'll get nice and pink, and it really, really feels good to them. And you can dry it off. It'll usually dry off anyway after you've done that under the blanket. Now I'm going to sit her up. We're just going to pretend this is bare skin. I'm going to put my mittens back in there, wring them out real good, and now I'm going to do her back real good. And just, okay. Now you've, I've done both arms, I've done her chest, I've done her back. And what you would do at this point if she's real comfortable laying there, then just let her lay there and let her have a good nap. If not, you can take her and move her to another bed that's all fixed up so that it's nice and dry. But most of the time, this is real comfortable, don't you think, Olivia? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, they can usually stay here. Most of my people just stay right here. And I always suggest that they should rest 30 to 45 minutes because I'm a little breathless now because I've been doing the friction. Um, what it's doing is we've just kicked in her immune system. We've just moved the impurities in and, or out of her lung area that we're working on, and we've drawn a lot of things away from her head and any other area because it'll, it'll work wherever things are going on in her body. And so we want her to be able to rest and we've just kicked in the immune system, so the next half hour to 45 minutes, this immune system's still going to elevate. And so she'll get even a better result if she rests through this treatment. Now, this treatment is good for many things. Any kind of lung congestion, like pneumonia, like various types of flus, bad colds, bronchitis, it works wonderful. It also, in the abdominal area, if you have problems in the abdominal area, whatever they may be, you can use fomentations across the abdominal. Um, for instance, if you have swollen joints, arthritic joints in the knees, the elbows, you can do this very same treatment. Now, you don't do this full body like you see here. You only do the fomentations the way you see me do it for the trunk of the body which means the chest and the abdominal area. When we do joints, and I'll just show you quickly, let's say this is a really bad painful joint that she has, then we would have a fomentation ready, uh, wrapped up, and I, I keep them a little bit smaller when it's gonna be over just a joint area. You can probably do it right in half. Put it inside of one of these blankets, have a towel again over her knee and I would have socks on her feet because I want to keep her feet warm if her feet are particularly cold 
You can also take a fomentation, wrap it up in a blanket, and you can put it down near her feet. You can put a hot water bottle there or just cover up with a blanket. But now what we're doing now is we're, we're concerned about a joint. So you just do another fomentation exactly like we did on the chest, and you'd put it over the knee. And you would exchange this back and forth with hot and with cold and end up with friction. When you're working with arthritics, they're very painful. It's usually best to put just a cold one. And if you're going to do any friction, just do it very lightly over the knee. Now, one thing to talk about is how many exchanges would you do? For any of these fomentation treatments, you can do anywhere from three to five to six exchanges of hot and cold. The, the classic one is they do three minutes hot, 30 seconds to a minute, you know, give or take, of cold, and they do three exchanges. But when somebody's really sick, I've gone and done five to six exchanges on it. You can also do these treatments, depending upon how sick they are, two to three times a day. And they will get even a better benefit by doing it more. But if you only can do one time, they're still going to get the benefit. Because remember what I said, what we're doing in the joints, what we're doing in the abdominal area, what we're doing in the chest area, is we're dilating the blood vessels. And this is so important. I want you to really get this. Then you understand how this treatment works, and you'll know it works dilates the blood vessels, and remember what I said it does? Pulls all the impurities, the disease that is in the infected area, let's say her lungs right now, pulls it all to the surface at the same time, it's bringing in healthy blood that has lots of oxygen in it, lots of white blood cells, lots of nutrition in it to the, to the infected area. So now I'm gonna do what, remember? It's gonna put the cold on her body, and it's going to constrict, and it's going to narrow down those blood vessels from this size to this size. And what happens when it constricts? Remember what I said? It's going to take all those impurities that it just brought to the surface, and it's going to take it through the cleansing organs of the body, which are the kidneys, the liver, and the lungs. And you're probably going to say, well, how's the lungs going to help clean? They're sick. Well, what happens with the heat being there, the hot and cold, it opens the lungs up to now do the job they're supposed to do. So it helps to kick out faster the impurities that are in there, the infection that may be there, the bacteria, the virus, whatever is in that area. So the constant repetition of hot and cold is going to exchange that blood so many times and bring that good white blood cells that brings healing to the area, plus lots of vitamins and minerals and everything else that's in the blood, and then bring the oxygen. Remember what I said about joints, pain in the body, whether it be lower back, whether it be anywhere on the back, whether it be any of the joints, is a high indication that we have low oxygen. So now when you've done the arthritic joint, which is swollen and painful, you know that you're now, you've brought in all kinds of good blood, you've brought lots of oxygen in the area, therefore the pain is going to be considerably reduced along with the inflammation, and then we can bring healing to this area. So may God bless you as you apply these treatments to whatever the condition may be. I encourage you to make yourself a little kit that you have ready at all times. You can see on this website, you'll see where you can buy the fomentations, uh, the various things that you will need, or you can just make them, like I said, out of towels. You'll see the instructions so that you'll know what to do. Thank you again for being part of my audience and, and learning all these wonderful things that will help you. And remember, you, your body has to heal. It's not a question, well, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't work. There's no way that this lung, these lungs here will not heal after the treatment that we just gave them. Thank you. Thanks for watching our assembly here at Watch the Hills. We hope you received precious information. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. 
Also, hit that notification bell so you know when we upload our next program. Follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. The links are in the description box below. Have a great day, and until then, be well.